Debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Uh, next one is the Metropolitan Strengthening Communities Fund um, and Lexi Rubin from Community Funding is here and um, oh, Josh Warden. Jock. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Lexi Rubin toka ingoa. Um, I'm the team leader of Community Funding. Um, so the purpose of the Strengthening Communities Fund is to support community focused organisations whose projects uh, contribute to the strengthening of community wellbeing in the Christchurch city area. This year there are 117 eligible applications. These applications have been assessed by staff, reviewed at a staff collaboration and workshopped with the funding subcommittee on the 29th of July. Um, these applications have requested um, just over $4.6 million and with our fund having an available um, 3.7 we are oversubscribed. Um, we have recommended to maintain out of that $3.7, $200,000 towards our discretionary response fund. We also have multi-year commitments which total um, just over $2 million, which means we have an available balance to allocate this year of about one5 The workshop have recommended about one4 of that, um, which leaves us with 66000 to either allocate today or to maintain for our DRF to use throughout the year. Um, yeah. Lovely. Look, I'd, I'd like to hand over to Yani because um, Yani pulled the, um, the working group together that uh, looked at the recommendations in detail. So can I hand over to you, Yani? Oh, thank, thank you. Um, I was going to ask staff just to give a, if they could just give an update on the CSO um, because there was a outstanding request for some information um, which which I think would be helpful but maybe maybe we just have a noting provision to maybe have a briefing on the relationship with the CSO if I don't know if that's something so that's just a first question of staff but um, I'll, I'll get into introducing it so I think I mean in summary just to thank staff for the huge amount of work staff do an amazing job doing assessments of these organizations and I think the thing that comes up is that um, you know, po post COVID, um, there's huge pressures on organisations with the huge rise in the cost of um, service delivery. And as a city, we're in, you know we're incredibly generous in terms of our support. We have a strong social conscience to support our, our, our community sector, but actually we can't do it all. We need to work as as best we can in partnership and maximise um, the investment that we're putting into the community to to try and get the. Um, most efficient and the best results for the work that people do. So, you know, I think through the application process, staff have, have done a really fair job at assessing um, the demand and the needs and with the quantum of funding that we have. I think really um, for the new council, there, there should be an opportunity to consider how we do um, line item funding through the annual plan or the long-term plan, um, because I think there's a number of groups that we fund seem to fund sort of every year on a regular basis that it probably is better to look at the non-contestable um, normal budget process to, to do that. Um, so I just want to thank the councillors that are attended um, and to thank staff for the work that they've done. I think there's a there's an amendment around the crush at Youth Council um, and I'm not sure if it's, it's been uh, moved formally but I'm happy to move formally that we increase the crush at Youth Council from the just move, sorry. Yani, I'm not just move don't it. mean to interrupt. Just move the motion okay. with an increase in in that um, right. line item. Okay. Cool. So I'm happy to move the resolutions that are put forward with the noted increase in the Christchurch <coughs> Youth Council from thirty to forty thousand. And I acknowledge that that's different than the view of the the committee. Um, but I think to note that council is doing work with the youth council around reviewing the MOU, and I, I think it would be in good faith that we, we work with them around around that before we um, reduce the funding that they received from the quantum they received last year. Thank you. Look, can I just um, intervene in relation to the CSO? Um, you know, there, there, there were issues around the um, timing of their uh, request. 
uh, there were some misunderstandings um, and a brand new chief executive. So um, all I'm going to say is uh, I'm not going to ask staff to respond to Councillor Johansson's question here. I'm just going to say that um, there, there, there are explanations that sit in behind that. Um, and so I think that the, the, the matter um, stands as it's placed in the paper. And we'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, and then we can follow up with any additional information by way of a memo if it's required. So, um, Pauline, do you want to second it? Um, y yes, but I'd also like to test the room on a willingness to increase the Ferry Mead uh, Heritage Park from 160, uh, from 120 to 140. So that would be um, spending 30,000 of that 66. So, um, the need. I, I don't know anything about. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm taken by surprise. I by, know. I'm sorry. I yeah. did, and I did, but um. it, often, often if um, if people let me know things in advance, then we can sort things out um, by way. Yeah, of apologise for that. But if if there's no willingness to do it, that's fine. But I, know, I'm, um, I'm not I just wanted that to test no the willingness to, to do it. I mean, we. It's difficult times for everybody, but I know difficult. I'm worried about Ferry Mead and I think a little bit of assistance at this point would be helpful. They have requested 160, recommendations 120. So I'm suggesting a further 20 for them. Well, I think originally well, we used well, let, to... Let, let's, um, well, I'll look for a seconder to the main resolution. The main resolution? If, 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 like, I just, I, I'm just I, trying I to refer. The twenty thousand extra as a as an amendment. So if, if, but I haven't got a second. The main resolution. So Jake seconds to Yanni's move, and then Pauline has moved an amendment, which is to increase the ferry meet um, uh, uh, grant by twenty thousand, and that's seconded by you, Mike. Is yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we can. We can. We can. Um, and, and I mean, I'll get staff to confirm that that still leaves um, a, an element of the uh, grant funding available, um, but obviously 20,000 less and also um, the 10,000 additional for the youth. So that's 30 of the 63. Correct. Yep. yep. Okay, Andrew, did you have a question? No. Oh, sorry, I thought I saw your hand up. Um, Aaron. Yeah, I'll take no part in the Ferry Mead one because it's, uh, there's a potential conflict of interest there. Uh, so um, I won't take part in that bit, if that's yep. all right. Um, I was interested in raising an amendment as well for Rana Park, given the amount they ask for and the amount we give by $20,000, if there's an appetite for that as well. And no, I didn't send it to you in advance, so I apologise for that. No, 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 but I mean, the thing is, is that people don't <coughs> need to send me things in advance, but I have to deal with it by way of an amendment. And, yep. you know, even staff are caught by surprise. Oh, I, I spoke to Josh about it, so he was aware that I was going to raise it. Because we had the visit <coughs> after we had the workshop to the, to the park, and there's 15 rhino coming to the park quite soon, including some orphans. I am a big supporter of Little baby of orphans. <laughs> the work that they do in the international breeding programs um, for, for, you know, soon to be otherwise um, extinct, um, uh, you know, animals um, is extraordinary. So, um, but I, yeah. It's just, it, you know, I'm just talking about a very easy way to manage meetings and due process. So it's just helpful if people advise me what they're going to do before the meeting because it's helpful. Not for any other reason, but if you want to be unhelpful, then you certainly know how to do that. So I've got an amendment that we increase the funding for Arana Park by $20,000. Do I have a seconder for that? I'll second Mel? Yeah. Yep. All right, so, so we've, we've got um, two amendments and we've got one main one. Yanni. Sorry, it might be helpful because there was a meeting um, held with Environment Canterbury, but um, yeah, and then I'm not sure, did they not attend? It was so, a regional... Because there's been some work done between the workshop that we had and today around trying to look at other sources of funding for Arana Park, and I think 
Councillor Kieran was involved in that. So um, it might just be useful to give an update about what happened there. The very brief update is we had a regional meeting with uh, the Greater Christchurch Councils. Environment Canterbury were invited but declined the request. Uh, and we discussed future funding options for the park, uh, but those discussions, we all agreed, uh, will continue after the elections. Um, right, okay, thanks. Um, Tim. Um, with these additions, how much is left in the... <coughs> Nothing, 3,000. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. 6,000. 6, 6, 6, 6, so, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, as mentioned before, there's, it's hard times for a lot of organisations. Many organisations didn't get any money, so when organisations that may be the wheels coming off and things haven't gone well for them, there's only going to be 6,000 left for any organisation. There's still 200,000. Yep. Yep. But there's still 60,000 60. gone, over and above. Uh, from yeah, this, so we'll have the 200,000 available in the dairy plus anything remaining from today's meeting, which as it currently stands is 16,900. Okay. Uh, and that'll be available for allocation throughout the year until it's expended. Yeah. For these and, but that's open not just to these organisations, yeah. but to any organisation. Correct. Yep, throughout the city. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, noting that the Ferry Mead um, project is for, worth around 400,000, 421. A runner park is five million. How do you see 20,000 benefiting Arana Park? It's a lot from our fund. W will that have a significant benefit for them, bearing in mind their total operation is massive? Yeah. The honest reality is that Arana Park's needs are far greater than can fit um, within the constraints of, a, of this fund. Mm -hmm. um, the 20,000 increase would go directly to uh, deferred maintenance for the park, which is really their their highest priority in terms of um, upkeep and the uh, attractiveness of the park as a whole. Um, is it enough? Certainly not in the long term, uh, and that's why we're keen to have discussions around uh, how Arana fits potentially outside of, of this fund uh, after the elections. Yeah, it's going to have to be part of, um, and, and I mean I would recommend that the incoming council look to it as um, a major project for the LTP so that there can be a special consultative procedure with the wider area of um, the residents of Christchurch feeding into it. Um, and, and at the same time as you do that, you actually boost community support for what they do. Um, and you boost community understanding of the nature of the programs that they're involved in. Mm. It's not just a zoo, um, it is actually a, you know, a living, breathing, international breeding program component that's quintessential to saving some of our endangered species. So anyway, it's um, uh, so you can see where my, my passion lies but um, in terms of the outcome. But as you say, it's a, a relatively small contribution um, to a bigger um, resolution that will be made by the incoming council. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with increasing the amount as long as that's not going to leave the fund depleted. Um, in terms of any, any potential needs. I mean, the vast, the vast sums of money are allocated at this point in the, in the schedule um, so that people have a, a clear understanding of where they're going. Mm. Um, Yanni? There, there is one organisation that is going to come back through the DRF, and that's COCA. So I just wanted to check with staff. Do you know when that's coming back to council for a decision? Um, <laughs> Fifteenth. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Tom. <coughs> Do you know the amount? It was a certain. It was pretty <laughs> assertive. Yeah. Fifteenth. Um, yeah. They also have a capital endowment um, application at oh, the moment. Sorry, which... that's what I thought you were referring to, Councillor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, not uh, referring to the D um, not referring to the endowment fund. Re referring to the DRF. Um, there was a lot of discussion about you know, whether they should go in this process and they were waiting for other things from Crab New Zealand and as those issues are getting resolved, the idea was that they would come back to the DRF because they would have a bit more certainty about what they would need the money for. Yeah. But I just wanted to check, because we've made amendments today, we've taken quite a lot of the discretionary um, amount for allocation and during the workshop there was a little bit of a discussion about leaving a balance in to support 
um, COCA possibly coming through the DRF. So, yeah. At this stage, we haven't received a DRF application from COCA. Right. Um, they need to work through the um, the capital endowment application first to give them some stability to be able to plan their okay. programs. Right. And at that point, once they've got a, um, a firmer plan around their programs, we'll look to support with the DRF application. Um, That's unlikely to be um, any time soon. That'll be in the new term. Yeah, yeah. That, that won't be before the elections. That'll likely be after. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, I'm happy to work with stuff. All right, so um, I'll just test the water. Are the mover and seconder happy to take in the additional amounts? Yanis? Uh, yes, yes and no. Um, yeah, yeah I know, but uh, for, for the sake of Yeah, not, for, not for just, yeah, absolutely, that's yeah, fine. Okay, yeah, I just so, wanted to reflect so, so what the, the workshop So the two amendments are now form part of the um, baseline resolution. Thank you. Yanni? Right. So are we in debate now? Or well, are, are there any more questions? Any last minute surprises? No? Any more? No, that's all right. Um, Yanni? Oh, I mean, I was just going to um, just just talk to two other things just as we're coming to the end of, of this um, report. But one is I think there's a real need. There's a real need for a regional facilities um, plan around funding major organisations in our city that are regional, where we as a city have actually picked up the, the cost. And um, we can't do it alone. And, you know, I'm just mindful of the amazing presentation we heard this morning around the Bridge Street um, work and the hub and when you kind of think about that in relation to some of these other facilities that we have like ferry made like around a park you can start to see i think hopefully some sense of partnership possibly with central government possibly with the philanthropic funders in our city but also with the huge amount of people and companies and organizations in the city that want to help contribute to our social fabric for the well-being of our community and the well-being of our environment um so you know i think we, we do need to kind of think about that Greater Christchurch regional funding model um, and how we can improve it. Um, because clearly every year as a council, we can't just meet the ongoing increased costs that some of these major organisations are facing when they do provide um, regional um, benefit and, and possibly also national, ha do have um, programmes of national significance, whether it's you know the heritage or the, the animal um, breeding. So, but I'd, again, just to thank and acknowledge um, there's, what, one, two, I think there's three staff in the room, four staff maybe in the room today, but actually there's, um, when we had the workshop, probably about 20 to 30 staff that do the assessments, and so if you could just pass on our thank you also and acknowledgement to them, as because we just acknowledge what a hard time it has been with the COVID disruption um, and still requiring a huge amount of work to come up with the assessments. Thank you. I'm happy to put the motions. Tim. Yeah, look, it's always an awkward thing when we kind of do last minute amendments and I don't know if it really helps organisations as they expand on the belief that they're going to get money that they haven't secured yet. And I do think we've got to go back to organisations and just make sure they have a realisation that they have to work within the planned funding that they've got and they know, rather than just expanding and just hoping it's going to work. The, and why I say that is we've got a whole lot of organisations that have come through COVID and other things. Look at inflation in the UK at 18%. There are going to be a lot of organisations really struggling in the future, and it won't be over the next 12 months. It'll be longer than that. So I'm always concerned when we kind of do these things, and you, you do a great job with regards to the workshops with staff, which is fantastic, and then do some changes at the end. And I just don't, I don't think it's a positive thing. I don't think in the long run we help those organisations. Thank you. Um, Aaron. Yeah, I'd like to uh, firstly um, thank the Mayor for her words before on Arana Park. I think that was a really strong, strong debate in the way that you uh, addressed that, so uh, I won't repeat any of that. Auckland Council, though, gives $9 million a year operational to their zoo, and we give $250,000. Uh, and um, they do an incredible job out there. There's, uh, well, 270 this coming year, so um, thank you very much to everyone involved. Uh, there is like I alluded to before, there's 15 white rhino on their way. There's currently three here. Uh, they're part of an international breeding program, and the majority of those white rhino that are coming in are all orphans, including there's a story that will eventually become an international documentary because it's being followed by an international crew of Finn the orphan, uh, who's, who's a wee um, baby rhino that's on his way here. And that will be an incredible story. And they're coming in a 747. 
and uh, you don't get them very often at Christchurch Airport. So for all the plane spotting nerds out there, it'll be a great day to come out and watch that come in as well, because those people exist as well. So it's a it's a win win out in Harewood. <laughs> anyone else? Look, I wanted to acknowledge um, Councillor Yana Johansson. Um, every year he puts his hand up for the role of um, working through with councillors, um, so it's a coalition of the willing and those who will turn up, um, to work through in depth with staff, and staff have done all the hard work, and I acknowledge the whole team that sits in behind the two that sit in front of us today, or the three that I can see um, from here, and um, that we are, you know, we're, we're incredibly grateful for the hard work that you do. But I wanted to acknowledge um, Councillor Johansson because he really has put his heart and soul into this, and I know that. Um, it's always in challenging times when you're looking for relatively easy savings in terms of um, LTPs and annual plans and various other things, um, that community groups are often at the front end of that. And this is, um, this is at, the, this is at the, the reality end of the COVID impact on our social fabric. And I, I love the way that Yani put that. Um, and it is really important because, you know, a city isn't a city without the social fabric and the ties that bring people together, whether it's to celebrate our history, whether it's to celebrate an international breeding programme, whether it's to celebrate um, music. And, you know, when you look at the Christchurch Symphony Trust, you go, oh, is that just for people who pay to go to concerts? No, it's actually about members of the orchestra reaching out into our schools and into the wider community, taking out the passion and instilling that passion in the next generation um, and actually ensuring that, um, that, that that opportunity is available to, to children and young people with all ranges of talent. Not everyone's going to go to university, not everyone's going to um, want to have a particular um, type of career, and um, but the opportunity for a professional orchestra in a city of our scale, you know, we are the capital of the South Island. I think we should be proud of the fact that we have um, a, a, um, our own orchestra, we have our own professional court theatre, we have um, a number of other things, but also at the same time we're, we're um, ensuring that organisations like Aviva uh, formerly the Christchurch Women's Refuge. So we're looking at the social fabric, what holds us together as community. So I'm really grateful, Yani, to you and to the whole team for all of the work that you do. Thank you very much. I'll uh, put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I won't forget your name, Doc, again. <laughs> Um, and the next item 12, I'm going to just move that to the um, meeting on the 8th of September if people are, uh, well, I don't care whether you're good with that or not, that's what I'm doing. Um, and so it's now 10.55, so rather than start on the MCR Norwest Arc um, Section 3A Detailed Design Traffic Resolution Report, um, I will adjourn us until 10 past 11 uh, where we can return from morning tea and we'll start on that item. Thank you.